Hello and welcome to this trauma-informed yoga practice for our hips and psoas. My name is Caitlin. I'm a 500-hour registered yoga teacher and a certified trauma-informed yoga instructor. And I'll be guiding you through today's practice. As we move through our sequence today, the most important thing is that you feel good. So if at any point something doesn't feel right in your body, please feel free to make any modifications. You're also welcome to take a rest at any point if it's feeling a bit intense. Just make sure that you're listening to your body because this is your practice. We're gonna begin our practice today in child's pose. We're gonna do wide-legged child's pose, bringing our knees to about mat width distance or closer in, if that's what feels good in our body today. We're gonna take a deep breath in through the nose. And on your exhale, gently hinge forward from your hips. Reach your arms out in front of you and lower your forehead down towards the mat. Taking deep breaths here, in through the nose, filling up your belly with air. And on your next inhale, we're gonna slowly walk our hands towards the right side of our mat. Coming into a gentle side bend, opening up our left side body. We'll take one more breath here. And when you're ready, we're gonna slowly walk our hands to the other side of our mat. We're going to slowly walk our hands back through center, reaching them far out in front of us, feeling that extension through our arms and our shoulders and our spine. And on your next inhale, we're going to pull ourselves forward to a gentle rocking motion here, just opening up our lower abdomen, coming into a modified cobra pose. And we're going to push our hips back into child's pose. We're gonna do this two more times, just waking up our hips. And this time we're gonna rise up, bring our knees closer together, about hip width apart wrists under shoulders, knees under hips, into our tabletop position. Take a deep breath in, dropping our belly towards the earth, lifting our chin up towards the sky. We're gonna start our cat-cow sequence. Just warming up our spine here, exhaling to round our spine, tuck our chin. On our inhales, we move into cow, Keep some awareness in your abdomen. Feel that stretch through your psoas region. Making your movements as small or as big as you want to today. And 
finish our last round here. And return to a neutral spine. Make sure your fingertips are spread wide on your mat to protect your wrists. Take a deep breath in. And on your exhale, we're gonna lift our left knee in towards our chest. And then we're gonna take our left foot, we're gonna step it outside of our hands here, coming into our lizard pose. walk your foot a little more in front of you depending on how much flexibility you have in your hips this morning and you can stay right here just like this or there's an option to lower down onto your elbows if that's available to you in your practice today should be feeling that stretch right here in your inner thigh, also in your right hip and your right quad. Again, you can stay right here, continuing to sink a little deeper into your stretch with your breath. Or I invite you to join me in taking our left hand and opening up into a gentle twist, twisted lizard. And if it's available to you in your practice and you'd like to sink a little deeper into your stretch, you can slowly kick your back leg up, reach around with your hand to deepen your quad stretch a little bit more. And slowly release that foot back down. Bring your hands back to your mat. We're going to slowly take our left foot and instead of kicking it back into tabletop position, we're actually going to bring that foot across our body and lower straight down into our pigeon pose. This is a pretty intense hip stretch, so if you're feeling any discomfort here, you can always place a block or a pillow or a blanket right here to kind of lift you up a little higher. Also have the option to lower down onto our forearms here to make the stretch a little bit more intense. You shouldn't be feeling any pain in your knee. So if at any point you're feeling a little discomfort here, it's a sign you're a bit too deep into your stretch and you should pull out a bit. Continuing to find those nice, slow, deep breaths. Using our breath to connect with our body and sink a little deeper into the stretch. On every exhale, see if you can relax your muscles just a little bit more, releasing some of that tension. We're gonna hold here for about three more breaths. And we're going to slowly bring our palms back to our mat. 
gently rise up a bit. We're gonna tuck our back toes here. And we're gonna transition from here into a low runner's lunge, bring our foot between our palms. And rock back and forth just a little bit here. Kind of release any tension or soreness you might have from that last posture. And then we're gonna gently drop our back knee to the earth. You can walk our foot out a little bit more if that feels good to you. We're gonna gently rise up, maybe bring your hands to your hips. You can reach your hands above your head if you'd like. Find that opening through our psoas, more so on the right side here. And we're continuing to take those nice deep breaths. If you'd like to add a little movement here, maybe you wanna rock back and forth, get more of a dynamic stretch in. And return to your low lunge, finding stillness. I'm gonna stay here for three more breaths. And slowly lower your hands back down to the earth. Take your front foot, bring it back into tabletop position. We're gonna find some large hip circles here. So sinking our hips down towards our heels back up noticing any asymmetries in your body now that we've worked one side and we're going to move on to the other and we'll switch directions Ready, return to your neutral tabletop position. Take a deep breath in and on your exhale again, we're gonna tuck our right knee this time in towards our chest. Then we're gonna step it to the outside of our right hand, coming into our lizard pose. Finding those deep breaths here, slowly easing into our stretch. You can roll onto the outer edge of your foot here. And if it's available to you, you're welcome to lower down onto your forearms. our twisted lizard. An option to go a little deeper by kicking up that back leg, reaching around for a nice quad stretch. Slowly release your bind if you have your foot grasped, returning to your lizard pose. Take one more deep breath here. And when you're ready, we're gonna slowly bring that front foot around 
into our pigeon pose, wiggling it across our body and lowering down. It's normal to have one side of your body that's more flexible than the other. So if you notice that you can go a little deeper in pigeon on one side, uh, maybe a little deeper earlier than now, that's totally normal and okay. We have the option to lower down onto our forearms here. Finding steady breaths in and out through your nose. On your exhales, seeing if you can release a little bit more tension that you're carrying in your body. Three more breaths here. slowly make our way out of our pigeon pose coming back up onto our palms we're gonna tuck our back toes gently rise up a little bit and we're gonna bring that foot between our palms into that reverse lunge it's kind of an awkward transition so take your time here and when you're ready we're gonna lower our back leg down towards the earth coming into a low lunge you can stay right here. You can bring your hands to your hips, or maybe you want to reach your hands up overhead. And we're opening up our psoas here on our left side this time, feeling that stretch all along here. like to find some dynamic movement maybe rocking back and forth you're welcome to and we'll return to stillness let's take one more breath here and on your exhale, go ahead and fold forward, return your palms to your mat, and bring that front leg back into tabletop position. And we're gonna find our hip circles here, gently rolling to the front, sinking our hips towards the back. Making circles as big or as small as you'd like to this morning or this evening. <laughs> We'll switch directions. I encourage you to find an intuitive movement here, whatever feels good to your body.
And when you finish your last circle, we're gonna return it to our neutral tabletop position. I invite you to slowly walk your hands in front of you, lower down onto your forearms, extend your legs behind you, coming into Sphinx Pose. Paying attention to that stretch along your low abdomen here, rolling your shoulders down and back, nice and tall. Continuing to find your deep breaths. You can stay right here, or you can join me in kicking up your legs. You might want to spread your knees a little further apart for this. We're going to find a gentle windshield wiping movement, left and right. do one more round and then return to stillness, lowering our legs back down to the earth. And again, you can stay right here in Sphinx Pose, or you can join me in finding a nice quad stretch here. We're going to start with our left leg, kicking our heel in towards our glute, and we'll take our left hand and reach back, hugging it in towards our body. Maybe you want to find a little movement here, slowly rocking your foot left to right. And we'll return to stillness. Slowly release our leg down. We're going to repeat this on the other side with our right leg. Gently kicking that leg up, reaching around with our hand and hugging it into our body. Option to find that movement, that back and forth. And return to stillness. And slowly release your leg back down. A deep breath in, deep breath out. We're gonna slowly push through our palms up through Cobra if it's accessible to you. And then we're gonna bring our hips up towards the sky and sink back into our child's pose. Taking deep breaths here. We're almost through our practice. I invite you when you're ready to slowly rise up to a kneeling position. We're just going to bring our legs out from under us, coming into a comfortable seat on our sit bones. We're gonna bring the soles of our feet together, coming into butterfly. You can keep your legs further out into more of a diamond shape if that feels good to you, or you can bring your legs a little bit closer in hugging your feet together for butterfly. We're gonna start off with a gentle flapping motion in our knees here.
And then we'll find stillness. Option to bring your elbows onto your knees, pressing them down to get a little deeper into the stretch. gonna gently rise back up you might want to push your feet a little further in front of you and we're gonna move into recline butterfly gently lowering down onto our back just taking a few deep breaths here We're going to continue to find our nice deep breaths here, allowing gravity to push us a little deeper into our stretch. When you're ready, we're gonna gently bring our hands to our upper thighs and slowly guide our knees back up together, coming out of our butterfly posture. We're going to find one last gentle movement to shake out any tension in our hips by windshield wiping our knees down to the right, back up through center and down to the left. And do this a couple more times. And when you're ready, we're gonna slowly extend our legs long, coming into Shavasana, final posture of our practice today. You can release your arms down by your sides, relax your shoulders, allowing your back to melt into the earth beneath you. And I invite you to soften your gaze or close your eyes. We're gonna slowly start to come back to your body. And start by wiggling your toes, wiggling your fingertips. And when you're ready, we're gonna slowly roll onto one side and gently push ourselves back up into a comfortable seat.
Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed your practice. The light in me honors the beautiful light in you. Namaste.